If there's anything I love, it's taking pictures of myself. <laughs> Today, we're gonna do so much of that. Aren't we all so lucky? Yay, more photos of Maddie. <laughs> All right, so hey guys, it's Maddie, and today we are doing a video that I have had on my list for fucking forever at this point. This video is 100% inspired by an Instagram account that I follow called Fat Art History. I stumbled across this account because a ton of fat influencers that I follow have shared this account 100 times over and I fell in love with the content that they post. Basically just an account dedicated to posting fat women in art throughout history. And they're showcasing art throughout a range of years. So they've got super old works of art on the page, but they've also got more recent stuff like in the last 10 years on the page as well. It's just this wonderful, glorious page that is full of fat women being the main character which I need more of in my life. I feel like everyone knows at this point the power of representation, how powerful it is to see someone in art or popular media that reflects you, that looks like you. I still remember the first time that I watched My Mad Fat Diary, Ray Earl changed my fucking life. <laughs> Watching that show in high school was like world changing. To see a fat character that struggled with her body in a very similar way that I did at the time was like incredible. The reason why I bring that up is just to emphasize the fact that seeing yourself in media is so fucking powerful. It's something that leaves an impact on you, especially if you are within a group of people that is not often shown in popular media. And representation matters in a lot of different ways other than just the characters of the TV shows and movies that you watch. Representation matters in terms of the people that you follow on social media. Are your feeds diversified? Do you follow people that look like you? Do you follow people who don't look like you? And anyways, the reason why I'm saying all this <laughs> is just because there is something so powerful about seeing fat women in art. To see fat women displayed, looking luxurious and loved, having people draped over them, watching them, seeing fat women lounge around, literally being a fucking painting, a work of goddamn art. It's impactful. There are so many different types and pieces of media that have felt impactful for me in terms of reshaping how it is that I experience and celebrate my fatness. And this is one of those pieces of media. Having a whole account dedicated to fat women being the centerpiece in these gorgeous works of art is everything. That's amazing. And so I thought today it might be fun to try to recreate some of the images that I found on this profile with myself. This page is full of photos. It was hard for me to pick like which ones I felt the most inspired by, which ones I felt the most drawn towards. And in the end, I've come up with four different types of photos that I'm gonna try to take today. They're not all like direct recreations of a photo that I found on that page, more like photos that are inspired by some of the art on the page and the general sort of vibe and theme of these photos. So the first photo that I wanna take is, I definitely wanna take one laying down, lounging on a couch. These types of photos, this pose of a fat woman laying down on her side, gorgeous, incredible. I talked about this pose in my How to Take Your Best Nudes video, the first one, and so this is one that I'm familiar with. This is one that I love so much. Paint me like one of your fucking French girls. This is the vibe. The next photo that I wanna do is like a bra and underwear doing skincare, drinking some sort of alcoholic beverage while sitting straight up in a chair with my legs like draped over the side. One of my favorite things about a lot of the art on this profile is that a lot of it, if not all of it, is showcasing fat women in very natural poses. Showcasing fat women, you know, slouching over and curled up on the couch. You actually get to see fat people existing as fat people and like living in their bodies. I definitely want to shoot one of these photos just sitting up in a chair, like laying to the side with my legs over the edge or something. This third one is sort of a crossover. It's inspired by the Fat Art History account, but also inspired by this other creator on Instagram who I cannot for the life of me figure out what their name is. So editing Maddie, 
You're gonna figure out what it is and you're gonna tell me right now. Hi, editing Maddie here with absolutely no information. I have no idea who I was talking about here. I'm starting to doubt my own memory. Did I make this up? I asked over on my Instagram if any of you guys know who I might be talking about and I got a lot of suggestions. Apparently a lot of people shoot photos like this, uh, but none of them were the person that I remembered. So I don't really know who I was thinking of, but if I find them, I'll add it whenever I do. For this photo, I want it to basically be a full body nude, except we're gonna use flowers to cover up the parts of my body that would need to be censored. And then the last photo that I wanna take is just close-ups of my stomach and hips draped in sheets. I think it would look really cool, like merging the lines and curves of my body with the lines and curves of a bed sheet and seeing how my body and the bed sheet can sort of mimic each other and flow into each other. That's one of my favorite things to capture about my own body is like the lines and the curves of my body and how they flow into the other parts of my body into other objects um, and how we can sort of mimic that flow in a more artistic grand way. So anyways, long ass intro all of that to say today we are celebrating fat bodies throughout art history with that being said let's jump into the video this is photo number one baby <laughs> this one obviously we're gonna do a little bit of lounging i kind of want to continue to incorporate the flowers that i bought and my disco balls and shine like a purple light onto one of the disco balls and see what we come up with ignore the fact that i'm like wearing a bra and underwear and socks it's a weird weird look i'm gonna take them off <laughs> Don't, I don't, don't erase it from your memory. <laughs> Putting the camera right here, or maybe I should put it sort of where this camera is. No. Very interesting setup that we have going on here. The light can only reach that far. Can you see the color? <laughs> Doesn't notice. <laughs> I figure out where I can put these flowers that don't totally block me, but that also add. Like I wish that I could elevate my body up a little bit so I could lay like just above the flowers. Okay, what I'm saying is I want the flowers to be on the floor. Great, thank you. Why am I? <laughs> I'll scooch a little bit closer to the ball and put my head on the ball. Yeah, baby, now we're cooking with gas. Okay, so for this one, I think I'm gonna use this photo as the point of reference for what I'm going for. I picked this one because A, I love a good self-care moment, living lavishly, treating herself, and just sort of existing as she is in this moment. Love that. Second reason why I wanted to do something in this style is because I think that it is important to see bodies in a sitting down position. Specifically fat bodies, obviously, but I feel like, I don't know if this was like a 2010s thing or if people still do this, but I feel like when I was in like middle and high school, people were really fucking pressed about what their bodies looked like sitting down versus standing up. And I remember this being a, a panicked thought that I had a lot as a kid. I don't even, like recounting thoughts like this because I was just clearly very sick at this time in my life. I used to think to myself like losing enough weight so I could have a flat stomach standing up was step one but losing enough weight where I could have a flat stomach sitting down was step two. And obviously that is a dark thought. That is a sad thing for a young kid to think. You're thinking to yourself, okay, I can accept my body like this, but I can't like that. I can accept my body when I'm standing up straight, you know, shoulders back, chin up. I can accept my body like that, but I can't accept my body when I'm sitting down or when I'm, you know, relaxing like my body normally 
looks like. I have to pose in order to accept myself, basically. I feel like in my own body image journey, it was so helpful for me when working to undo those kind of mindsets, seeing women who looked like me existing in their bodies without really posing themselves, letting themselves sit and seeing their roles move in different ways, accepting the fact that your body is going to look different all the time, that every angle, every position, your body's gonna look a hundred different ways and that is a beautiful thing. That's something to be celebrated, not something that needs to be hidden or you know, you pick this one pose and this one type of way you like to capture your body and never capture your body any other way. It's a process. I think to a lot of people it feels like having to accept a lot of different bodies instead of just accepting one. It feels so much more daunting seeing your body in so many different angles and lights and contexts and having to accept the way that your body moves and changes on a minute to minute basis. I get it, it's fucking hard. Anyways, the point of me saying all that is just to say that I think that it is a wonderful thing to capture more uh, portraits of our bodies existing as they actually look, as they naturally look on a day to day. Obviously it's super fun to have photo shoots and to actually pose for the camera. Obviously I do that all the time. But I also think it's a lot of fun to try to really capture your body as you are, to exist lounging around, to capture the different ways that your body moves and flows and changes minute to minute and find beauty in those changes, to find beauty in the way that you look sitting down as well as the way that you look standing up. All right, so I'm thinking that for this one, I actually want to take them as selfies. And I kind of want to pull in a one-seater chair and place it right here in front of the mirror because I like this backdrop and obviously if it's going to be a selfie, I need to be in front of a mirror. And then I think I'll probably pull in a bunch of the plants that I have and place them around me and behind me and try to make this look a little different than what my typical mirror selfies in this location look like. Um, and then I'm going to put on a face mask. Let's go pick one. So I'm thinking we either go with the chlorophyll mask from Coco Kind or the Super Clay Purify and Clear Power Mask from Youth to the People. I feel like I've already decided I'm doing the chlorophyll mask. Okay, wait, no, I'm switching it up. I'm gonna use the Coco Kind Matcha Modeling Mix, which was like a special one-off product that they did. But this is supposed to be like an at-home spa facial, which is, that's the energy I want. That's the vibe I want. So I think I'm just gonna go for it. I think I like this. Come and take pictures with me too, man. Oh my God, wait, I forgot to get a drink. This is just kombucha. It is like 1 p.m. I'm not gonna start drinking yet. White chair, red liquid, this really isn't a good idea. to give this flower moment a try. <laughs> but I have these white roses, these purple flowers, and then I have some dead pink roses sitting right here. So I think we'll use a combination of the three. I don't know, we've gotta play around and see how the fuck this is even gonna happen in the first place. Wow. I think this shot is gonna be mostly of just my torso. The background doesn't really matter that much, I don't think. I think it's probably just the lighting that matters the most. Can you hear my neighbor singing? <laughs> I have no idea how I'm gonna do this. I feel like this is a good crotch one. It covers a lot of area though. Say hello. Hello, my name is Mango. All right, we're gonna stack this one on top of some books. We have to be very careful or else I'm gonna spill a whole vase of water. <laughs> what is happening in the background? Like, I've lived in this apartment for almost a year now, so I feel like I'm just so used to hearing my neighbor singing all the time. <laughs> that I just like don't notice it anymore. So I'm filming and I'm not really noticing it. And then now I'm editing and I hear wah, wah. 
wow, 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 in the background, like I'm listening to fucking Fergie. <laughs> so we definitely have a lot of flowers going on, but we have this main one covering my hoo-ha, and then the rest you can see. So I actually think this works perfect. Okay, Mango, I need you to not touch the stack of books. All right, baby, okay. I think I'm just gonna hold them like this and then we're gonna go full nude. So, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna be able to put those photos in the video, so you're gonna have to go to my Instagram to look at them, but they might be some of the best pictures I've ever taken in my entire life. It's just such a good concept. It's really, it's giving fatties in the Garden of Eden. As it was and how it should be and how it will be, bitch. <laughs> Also, I just think that there's something very, uh, this is gonna sound weird, but there's something very plant-like about stretch marks. Hold, bear with me. <laughs> stretch marks, in a lot of ways, look like roots or even branches, like weaving through a massive tree. Just picture all of these tiny little branches weaving in and out of each other. To see the stretch marks on my stomach peeking in between these little bushels of flowers. It feels very much like this is how your body is, this is how your body should be. So let's celebrate it. And I think it's just such a beautiful thing to view stretch marks as like your body growing into itself, spreading, you know, grounding yourself deeper into your own body rather than I don't know, when I was younger and when I first started getting stretch marks, I really hated them. Because at the time, I saw it as like my body trying to get away from itself. When I looked at my stretch marks in the mirror, I sat and thought to myself that my body was trying to break out of my being. My body didn't want to be attached to me, like it was trying to break away from me. So there are these stretch marks. And in, in my head, it was like, who I am and what I look like are so at war with each other and these stretch marks feel like proof that my body and my brain don't belong together and that we can't get along and that we're just constantly fighting with each other. And so for a really long time, the stretch marks symbolized something negative to me. And when I looked at myself in the mirror and I saw those stretch marks, I felt like it, it was a sign that my body didn't, didn't belong within myself if that makes any sense. And obviously I've gone through lots of healing in terms of my relationship with my body and it's, you know, something that I'm still working on and something that I will always work on. My relationship with my body and how I treat myself and how I show up for the different versions of my present and past self, like this is something that I'm constantly gonna be working on. Healing is a lifelong deal. I don't remember exactly when the switch was, when I stopped feeling self-conscious about my stretch marks, when I started to like them, which kind of feels beautiful in itself. Like there was no grand moment where all of a sudden my brain switched and I was like, ah, now I like myself. It was like slowly over time, these parts of myself that I thought were symbols of like disagreement, of not belonging, they became something I was so comfortable with, something that I felt uh, like connected me to my experience as a woman. My stretch marks at some point just started being more of a symbol of being this beautiful, powerful woman that's just overflowing with so much goodness my body couldn't, couldn't contain itself. I say that word overflowing a lot to describe myself, my body specifically, and it's something that has felt so good. That word like just resonates with me, viewing myself like an overflowing waterfall. That to me just feels like such a, a sweet and like sensual way to view myself and to connect with myself. You are a part of nature. This is a part of you, an aspect of you that is so natural, that is so beautiful and wonderful. It all just feels too important to be mad at anymore, you know? Like I can't possibly view my stretch marks as my body and brain being at war with each other because I've learned that the only reason they were at war with each other in the first place is because I was taught to hate my body. I wasn't given a chance to like myself, you know? My body was never trying to escape me. My body loved me all along. I just 
was never in a space where I could love it back. And so now, looking at my stretch marks, it feels like proof that my body loved me all along. That it stretched and made room for me. That it always wanted all of me. Anyways, I know the metaphorical speak isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I, that has really helped me to see my body as being something that is like grounded to the earth, that is so natural to who I am, to my core, that helps me celebrate, you know, not only my fatness, but my womanhood as well. And I think it also just grounds me in experiencing and celebrating my body as this beautiful, sensual work of art. For this next one, I'm just gonna sit in this chair and do a close-up on my stomach and I have if you guys watch my apartment tour from last summer you know that I fucking hate linen bedding <laughs> it sucks it's mega cheeks so anyways I have the linen bedding that I was conned into buying last summer that I fucking hate um, that I'm just gonna use to like drape around me and create some more interesting lines and silhouettes since it is super crinkled because it's been shoved in the back of my closet for nine months. You know what, while we're on the topic, I would just like to reiterate that linen bedding sucks. And everyone who's telling you that linen bedding is so great is a fucking liar. I will tell you right now, I got got. The people on social media that were telling me that linen bedding was cooling, yeah. No, the fuck it's not. I run hot, right? I'm a hot girl. I don't turn my heat on ever. And these people were telling me that linen bedding was good if you run hot and it's cooling in the summer months. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lies. Uh, fully 100% lies, okay? Because the second I got this bedding, I was waking up in the middle of the night in a hot sweat. AC is running and I'm still like <gasps> gasping for air in the middle of the night. Switch back to my fucking cheap cotton bedding and what do you know? I'm a reasonable temperature again. So I don't understand. Linen bedding sucks. And that's the end of that conversation. Okay, time to take photos. <laughs> Am I stupid? Like how can, I can't figure out how to make this work. I had a vision and I see it in my head but I just don't know if it's working with a fitted sheet. <laughs> no, okay, we're abandoning that. <laughs> We're just gonna take close-ups of different parts of my body without a fitted sheet on top of me. Anyways, at least we got a rant about how linen bedding sucks out of it. <laughs> photos that I'm going to take for today's video. I'm so happy with how all of these photos came out. If you want to see more of them, the ones that I couldn't show in this video, be sure to go follow me on Instagram at MaddieDrawSpec. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.